Hey guys, so today we're going to be jumping into some quotes from Lauren Hisrich, who is in the Witcher series from Netflix, and uh, she has some woke things to say, so we're going to be jumping into that because that is always a fun thing to do, and uh, yeah, I have a question for you guys. Do you think Witcher, uh, the Witcher on Netflix is going to be woke, or do you think it is going to stay true to the story? We've already seen that they've been making changes such as uh, with some of the characters and their race and their gender and all that type of stuff. So, and, uh, you know, it's really funny because I believe, I believe if I'm not mistaken, Lauren Hisrich's character, if I'm not mistaken, I'm not a huge Witcher fan, okay? I believe her original character from the game was a redhead, right? I think that's what I heard. And if that's the case, then this, this is, it's really starting to become a thing where we're seeing redheads being uh wiped from entertainment it's so weird it is absolutely so weird seeing this happen it's happened to almost every redhead that's in entertainment it's ridiculous and uh this is just another another prime example of that and it's i i don't know what it is about it i don't know why hollywood hates redheads so much but uh <laughs> but uh you know i hope i just hope that bryce dallas howard doesn't suddenly just dis disappear one day or something like that so since the netflix adaptation of the witcher was announced fans of the novels and games have generally approached it with skepticism which uh definitely was me too you know i'm not like a big fan of the games but i do think that this, i do like the story of the games um it's just i just have a problem with the gameplay pretty much um so, let's just get right into what she's saying here. So, I am a public relations nightmare. The victimization has already begun, everybody. I haven't forgotten. Hi from London. It's an interesting place to write this because it's one of the most ethnically diverse cities in the world per the 2011 census. Diversity seems organic here, whereas in America, we talk about it a lot. It makes sense that we do because we have a long and checkered history of enslaving, abusing, and deriding people who aren't white. When the scales have historically tipped so far in one direction, it's natural to swing back in the other in order to find a middle ground. A lot of entertainment is made in America, so it makes sense that this frame of mind seeps into TV and movies as well. I can't speak for any other shows, but I can tell you in terms of The Witcher, that here are a few things that were in my mind when thinking about inclusivity. Let me just jump into a couple things here, okay? The first thing is, she says, diversity seems organic here, whereas in America, we talk about it a lot, implying that because we talk about it a lot in America, we uh, our diversity isn't organic, which is hilarious because she just answered her own problem there. That is a big problem in America. The problem is that the problem that I mean we don't have organic diversity in America because we do talk about it a lot. The mainstream media talks about it all the time. Hollywood makes a big deal out of it all the time. Leftists do, SJWs do. They are obsessed with diversity and they talk about it all the time, making it not never organic. I've talked about this before, you know, on the channel. If if uh, if Marvel, Hollywood, all those types of places want diversity to feel organic, just organically make it part of your movie and don't talk about it. Don't parade your diverse cast and your minority groups out in front of all these crowds and all that type of stuff and basically, you know, showcase them to people and be like look at us we have this diverse member in our movie that isn't helping the problem at all you know that isn't ever going to make diversity organic when you continue to do that that is why diversity isn't organic in america and if people would just leave it alone if people would just stop talking about it all the time and being obsessed with it it would start to actually become organic second thing is she makes it sound like uh, she makes it sound like England doesn't have a, a history of enslaving people either. Uh, that's not true. You do realize that England also was into slavery a long time ago. In fact, you probably didn't know this, Lauren Hisrich, but one of the reasons that we as America wanted to break away from England was because we wanted to end slavery. That's actually one of the reasons that we wrote the Declaration of Independence to break away from England. Um, so, 
you know, you can you can uh, take that if you want. Uh, basically, uh, basically, America ended slavery before England did, and you're still going to make this a big deal, really. Um. Anyway, so she pretty much just goes to and all sorts of different weird stats. The books the books are Polish and packed with Slavic spirit. It was important to keep that same tone in our show. With that in mind, I asked around, especially to Polish friends, can the Slavic culture be reduced solely down to skin color? The answer was resounding God, we hope not. Oh my gosh. What what kind of an idiot would you be to go around to ask any country, can can your culture be be reduced down to one skin color? I highly, highly doubt you would if you asked anybody, they would say, yeah, yeah. I mean, especially, I mean, if you asked almost every American in the U.S., can America be reduced down to one skin color, color culturally? I, I can guarantee you, like 99.9999999% of Americans would say no. <laughs> oh my gosh. People are just insane. People are insane. We're making the show for 190 countries. In all creative adaptations, changes are made with the audience in mind. In the video games, Geralt and the Witchers have American accents. That's not what was in the books, but developers wisely knew they should appeal to a broader audience. Um, the Witcher is really interesting when it comes to depicting racism because it's about species, not skin color. What makes characters other is the shape of their ears, height, etc. In the books, no one pays attention to skin color. In the series, no one does either. Period. Yet, and yet, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Like, but the problem is, is that you're taking characters that have already been established. And if you're basing this off of the video game, which in a lot of ways you are... You're then, then you shouldn't be changing the characters that have already been established. You know what I mean? The Witcher is really interesting when it comes to depicting racism because it's about species, not skin color. What makes characters other is the shape of their ears, height, etc. Um, anyway, you know, inequality between humans and other fantasy races have been present in The Witcher at times, but it but it has been on a species level. Human characters in the books and games reflected in the medieval Slavic setting and time period and were depicted as Caucasian. No premiere date. Anyway, yeah. So, you know, and I think that I think that I wouldn't have as big of a deal with things like this with, you know, changing the character in the in the series or, you know, making a black little mermaid, all of that type of stuff. I would I don't think I would have as much of a problem with that if they would just organically do it and just naturally do it and not try to draw all the attention to the fact that they are giving that character to a minority person, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, we are all human beings and it's, you know, it's not like that changing the character skin color is necessarily like a huge deal, especially when it doesn't have much relevance, uh, you know, culturally or historically or ge geographically or anything. But the thing is that they continue to draw all the attention when they do these types of things because they want their virtue signaling woke points pretty much. And that is the problem. That is absolutely the, the big issue here. So anyway, uh, Lauren Hissrich, I recommend that you read a history book. Um, and, uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Like, it's just, these people are just insane. And I'm getting more and more tired and sick of all the woke nonsense that is going on. And uh, this is just another person that is trying to play the victim here. And it's just really, really sad. So, with that being said, let me know in the comments below what do you think about this. What do you think about what Lauren Hissrich is saying here. Hope you guys enjoyed the mind video. And I will talk to you all very soon in another video. Talk to you later. Bye. All right, I have a minor correction to make about this video. Uh, I said that they that uh, England abolished slavery after America. That is actually not true. They abolished slavery in 1834. For some reason, I thought it was 1884 that they abolished slavery, but it was 1834. So I just have to make that clarification. But that still doesn't change the fact that America in the first place, wanted to break away from England because they wanted to abolish slavery and all of that type of stuff. So that's just, you know, I just wanted to make that clarification. So with that being said, hope you guys enjoyed my video and I'll talk to you later. Bye. Hey everyone, it's Jeremy from geeksandgamers.com. And if you're a fan of Geeks and Gamers, please go to our website, visit our merchandise store. We have t-shirts, hoodies, 
hats, beanies, tank tops, and in the very near future, we're going to have many more products for you to choose from. So thank you for the support. We appreciate it. You guys have a great day, and we will talk to you later. Thank you.